Now let's look at uh, problem number three in chapter four. It says a rock is projected from the edge of the top of a building with an initial velocity of 12.2 meters per second at an angle of 53 degrees above the horizontal. The rock strikes the ground a horizontal distance 25 meters from the base of the building. Assume that the ground is level and the side of the building is vertical. How tall is the building? All right, let's say we have a building and we project this rock at 53 degree angle with the initial velocity of 12.2 meters per second. And it's going to follow projectile motion, constant acceleration in the y direction, no acceleration in the x direction. And it's going to hit with a displacement uh, 25 meters from the edge of the building. So that will actually be our X displacement. Our Y displacement will be from the top of the building down to this point. So that will be our Y displacement like that. Okay, so this is truly a two-dimensional problem. We finally have a good two-dimensional problem. And let's see what we can do with this. We have our initial velocity that's going up at an angle, 53 degrees, 12.2 meters per second. We need to break this up into x and y components. So our initial velocity in the x direction is going to equal our velocity times the cosine of this angle. And that is going to be 12.2 times the cosine of 53 degrees. And that will give us initial velocity, 12.2 times cosine of 53 is 7.34 meters per second. Also, our initial velocity in the y direction will be our initial velocity sine theta. So we're just looking strictly at these two components, x component, y component of this triangle here. x component will be cosine y component will be sine. And in this case, let's go back to this, this would be 12.2 times the sine of 53 degrees and that gives us 9.74 meters per second. Okay, so these are our initial velocities in the x and y direction and we wish to use the principle of superposition which means that um, we can look individually at the x direction and at the y direction superimpose what's going on by the fact that everything is simultaneous having the same time so let's look in particular at the x direction what do we know well displacement is 25 meters. We're going to have a constant velocity, no acceleration in the x direction. And we know our velocity initially is 7.34 meters per second and that in fact is our final velocity as well. So here are three kinematic variables and say if we want to find time we've got enough to do that. In other words, displacement will equal initial velocity times time plus one-half acceleration times time squared. But the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So we strictly have displacement equals velocity times time, velocity being constant. So time will equal displacement divided by our velocity. And this would be 25 divided by 7.34 and that will give us a time, let me figure this out, of 3.41 seconds. Alright, that's the same time for the y direction. So let's see what happens in the y direction. We have initial velocity 
of 9.74 meters per second. We also have a time simultaneous of 3.41 seconds. We just figured that out. And our acceleration, if we define the velocity up as positive, our acceleration will be a negative 9.8 meters per second squared because it's in the opposite direction. And we actually want to find out, after this time, what our displacement is. So we have three kinematic variables, and we wish to find this fourth one, and so we can do it. Displacement will equal initial velocity times time plus one-half times acceleration times time squared. So this will be 9.74 times 3.41 seconds plus one-half times a negative 9.8 times 3.41 squared. I do this, 9.74 times 3.41 is 33.2. And then we'll have minus 4.9 times 3.41 squared, 56.9. That gives me a negative 23.8. What this means is, since we define up as positive, everything up was positive. So if we ended up with a displacement above the level of the building, that would have been a positive displacement. Anything in the opposite direction would be negative. So this is a negative displacement. We actually ended up going down below or in the opposite direction, and our displacement was a negative 23.8 meters. Since that's from the top of the building straight down to the bottom, our final minus our initial position, then that must be indeed the magnitude of the height of the building. So the height of the building is 23.8 meters. And that is the answer that we're looking for.